Hi everyone, welcome to the volunteer orientation of canine body language at the Jacksonville Humane Society. My name is Lexi, I'm the animal behavior manager here and I love talking about body language. This is a very brief presentation and if you have any further questions after this presentation or while you're volunteering, please don't hesitate to ask me or any member of the behavior team. All behavior is multifaceted. Behavior is contextual. This means, is the behavior expected at the time and place? For example, a dog that yawns after just sleeping is different than a dog that yawns in the middle of the play yard during playgroup. We can also see multiple behaviors happening, multiple body language clues happening, but what are the majority of the behaviors telling you? And they can have multiple meanings. Just like humans, dogs are individuals, and different body language cues are going to mean different things to each of them. So we need to say, do we know enough about the body language cues and enough about this dog to know what the dog is trying to tell us? Not all stress is bad stress. There's you stress, which is good stress. This can be stress that might seem bad in the beginning, but then it actually makes us more successful or um, the dog can actually get over the stress and feel better on the other side. And then we have distress, which is bad stress. Who is the one receiving the message of the body language clues? Is it the dog who is doing the behavior? No. Is it the animal or human who is being approached or shown the behavior? Yes. Only the animal or human that receives the message can interpret it and respond accordingly. That's why it's so important to understand body language with dogs because dogs speak in body language and they don't speak English as easy as that would be, but they don't. And so we have to learn how to read their body language so that we can respond accordingly. This does not mean, again, that the message is always received correctly. All right, so now we're gonna start in on what we see for body language cues. So our signs of comfort, the body position, the ears are high and back. We have an open, loose mouth, loose body, and that tail is at half mass. Oftentimes, we'll see dogs smiling with that big open mouth, and they just look loose and wiggly. Play signals are also body language, so we can see a play bow, a paw raise, or bouncy inefficient movement. Here we have some multi-meaning behaviors where they can mean play for some dogs and antagonistic behavior to others. Humping can certainly be a play, but some dogs don't think it's so great, so that could also potentially cause a scuffle. Growling, barking, and whining, really any vocalization can be, we have some vocal dogs who play, we have some vocal dogs that when they're getting uncomfortable, that's when they get vocal. Face-to-face -face greetings, usually we see that nice curved C greeting where the dogs are curved around each other, but occasionally dogs are more comfortable with face-to-face -face greetings, some are not. Also a muzzle punch. We see a lot of muzzle punching in play, but this can also be an initiation to potentially bring on some antagonistic behavior. All right, so now we're moving on to some early signs of stress. What do we see when these dogs are starting to get stressed? And we see a lot of stress behaviors in the shelter, so these are very important. So we see a mouth closed, tongue flick, backing away, scratching, out of context again, shake off, urogenital check, again, out of context, a tap out, submissive urination, smiling and squinting. I wanna talk a little bit about the tap out because many people um, see the tap out and think the dog is asking for a belly rub. With the difference between a tap out and a belly rub is usually with a belly rub, the dog's body is loose, you've been maybe been petting them before, and they kind of slide really slowly onto their belly because they want that rubbed. A tap out is usually a quick flip over. The dog might do some tongue flicks. They might have big wide eyes. They might turn their head away. That usually is a sign that the dog does not want their belly rubbed and they're saying, whatever you're doing is terrifying, please stop. So you can see that in the picture down here at the bottom. This dog is showing as a tongue flick and kind of frozen still in that position. And it's hard to tell from a picture, but kind of holding still in that picture, just like I'm not super comfortable with what Whatever you're doing, please make it stop.
All right, so now we're getting to even increasing stress where we start to see fear. And this is body position is dilated pupils, whale eye, which is where you can see the whites of the eye, body low, tail low, head low, and ears back. So stress can also be frustration or arousal. I think we've all seen this where your dog gets along with all dogs, but on the end of the leash, they act like a complete crazy pants because they're frustrated because they can't get to that other dog or that person on the other side of the road. And so we start to see this, the ears are alert and forward. The head is high. We might see barking or growling. Their weight is pulled forward and they have a stiff body, their tail is high and stiff, they may be flagging, so a really high stiff tail wag, and they may even do a neck over with the other dog, and again, that can be part of frustration, or they might just be so freaking excited that something's happening that we can see these behaviors, but that is still considered stress. Again, remember, not all stress is bad stress, so being aroused is stressful on your body. Your body is aroused, you have that adrenaline pumping, but it's not a bad stress. Okay, so now we're into danger signs, and these are signs that if you see something like this, you wanna stop whatever you're doing and move away from the dog. So that can be commissar forward, hard stare. Again, we're gonna see that whale eye, but it's gonna be very still, and it's gonna be very concentrated on you, and your body is gonna feel it, and if you feel that energy, then you should stop whatever you're doing. Enlarged pupils, again, that freeze. If they freeze and they're not moving, then usually they're uncomfortable with what's happening. Now, some dogs Dogs who are shy will freeze when being leashed or things like that. But again, multiple body language cues. So is the dog freezing at the corner and kind of just okay with what's happening? Or are they freezing and looking at you and maybe they're commissures for it or they're doing a lip curl? Then that could be something completely different. So again, we see the snarling, the lip curl, and then we have barking and lunging. breed artifacts. They make things harder for us. We have bred dogs and made to look a certain way and made the job look more difficult for us to read their body language. So we have the wrinkly face guys here who I'm not even sure if I could read their facial expressions with all those wrinkles. It would be really hard. Then we have cropped ears. Again, cropped ears could automatically make a dog look more aroused or alert, but they may not be. So again, we have to think really clearly about that. We have our curly tails, our alert ears. Uh, these guys are hard to read because the high tail is just something that they're born with. We can't count that against them. That's not a body language cue. That's just because that's what their tail looks like. And then the nub. The nub is my favorite. It is the cutest thing when it starts wagging, but it is the hardest body language cue to read. How, when your tail is only a few inches long, do you hold it high if you're uncomfortable or tuck it if you're uncomfortable? You can't. So it's really important that we learn, okay, what is a normal tail position for this dog? Is it changing or is it staying the same even if it's in a high, low, or nubby position? Same with ears, same with facial expression. So it's important as much to know about body language as it is to learn about the dog. And then last but not least, I'm sure you guys have all have heard this, but he bit me out of nowhere or he started being aggressive out of nowhere. Well, if we look at body language cues, there's no such thing as out of nowhere because dogs are always communicating with us. And it is really our job to educate other people and our families and friends on what the dogs are trying to tell us and then stand up for the dogs and let them say, you know what, this dog is communicating to me that they're uncomfortable, so I need to stop what's happening. So this picture is terrifying for me, but it's really important because kids and dogs, I think, are one of the combinations that can be the most dangerous but also the most wonderful educational opportunities. But it's really, really important for us to look at the dog and say, is this tiny human who is at your face height, are they making you feel uncomfortable and could we potentially be making a dangerous situation happen here? And so it's really, really, really important to always be looking at body language. We want to thank you so much for volunteering with us. 
we can't thank you enough. The dogs will thank you. We could not do it without you. And we're so happy to have you here. Like I said, again, this is a really brief overview of body language and you'll see a lot of it while you're here. And hopefully you'll be able to participate in helping us bring dogs out to play group where you'll see even more body language. So please ask the behavior team if you have any questions or if you have any concerns. And we look forward to seeing you walking dogs. Thank you.